Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here. Welcome back to another video tutorial. Today is all about filters and rendering in ZBrush. I'm going to show you how to recreate the look and feel of a 2D sketch, a blue pencil sketch more specifically, all within ZBrush with a single BPR click. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in ZBrush. I'm using the standard UI so that you can follow along a little bit easier. And at the time of this recording, I'm using the version 2022.0.5. Now, this is the type of uh, render that we're going to try to recreate or achieve today. And this is actually, let me just click on the canvas and move it around. This is just a model that you might recognize from a previous video tutorial where I show you how to use and how to tweak the comic style render material um, that I showed in that tutorial. I'll put a link in case you want to follow along so that you know what I'm talking about. But the cool thing about these uh, filters that I'm going to show you today is that you can sort of move things around, get closer, you know, change the, the perspective, whatever you want, then click on the BPR button here and Sirius is going to do the render and apply the filters post rendering. So that means that after it's render or after you get the render, you get all the effects happening in, in one single click, like I said. So this is what we're going to be working today. I have released a pack of filters with a bunch of different effects that you can use to recreate, again, different styles of 2D sketches like charcoal, uh, graphite pencil, uh, blue pencil sketch, uh, pen sketches, all of that. Uh, so feel free to have a look at that. And if you're interested in how to use those filters, you can jump to the end of this video when I'm going to show you how to um, to apply those different filters. But it's such an easy thing to do that um, it, it's just going to take a few minutes. So I prefer to concentrate on how to build those filters so that you can do them yourselves or when you get the pack of filters that you can actually tweak them to suit your needs. All right, so I'm going to start by going to the render palette here at the top and I'm going to dock that to the right because everything is happening uh, like I said, in the render palette, and I'm going to open up the BPR filters. All right. So I have already set up um, up to nine filters. This is what we're going to be recreating today. I'm going to click on each one of these dots, which indicates that um, the ones that are open are enabled. The ones that are filled with a dot, those are closed. And just to show you that every filter is contributing to a slightly different effect to generate the final look and feel. Okay. Another thing that is very important to mention is the size of your document because some of the filters, especially the uh, texture overlays and things like that, will take into account the size of the canvas. So I went ahead and in the document palette, I clicked on double and I have almost 3000 by 2000 pixels in the size of my document. So I can just move this out so you can see if I click on actual and get a little bit closer. Uh, hopefully this is going to be visible in the recording, but there's a, a bit of a jagged line here in the outline and that is due to the anti-alias. So the reason I went for a larger document is so that I can click on AA half and still see the entire canvas. But now if I get closer, everything is a lot sharper and nicer. So that's the reason for that. So I thought I mentioned that in case uh, you have slightly different uh, results, just make sure that the document is set to something along the lines of what I have in here. And then you click on the AA half so that um, it gives you the similar results. All right, so let's go ahead and jump straight into the tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Lightbox render set by clicking on this button here from the render palette. And I'm going to look for the default filter set, this one right here. I'm going to double click on that. And what this one does, this sphere, is to set everything to zero or like to the default one. So even if I turn them all, um, it's not going to be the same, uh, the same effect that I had before. All right, let's start by enabling the first filter by selecting it and then enable it in here. And let's move this a little bit up. And obviously, in order to see this filter, we have to do a render. So let's go ahead and click on the BPR render. And this is just going to give us a, a bit of a noise all over. And there we go. So I'm going to click on this, set it to 100 so you can really see the effect. So if you want to go for that sort of thing, uh, I believe I used this a couple of times for the charcoal um, filters. Uh, you can totally do that. But uh, obviously, this is not the, the look that we're going for. So instead, I'm going to click on the type of filter, this first drop down here, and I'm going to look for the uh, material shading, this one here at the bottom. I'm going to click on that. And immediately, you see that <laughs> nothing really changes. If I turn this on and off, uh, nothing is happening. But it has this thumbnail in here where you can use to choose any other material. So I'm going to click on this. And yeah, you can choose something. I don't know. Let's go for this gold material, right? And we're going to take the material shading, set it to 100. So we have 100% contribution of this new material on top of the render. 
right? And this is a fantastic way of blending materials at render time. I have another tutorial in the ZBrush Guides that talks about uh, rendering with multiple materials using this technique. So I'll put a link as well in case you want to follow along. But basically what this does is override any material that you have selected before the render. Now, you'll notice that we also have these uh, harsh shadows. So if you want to get rid of that, you can go to the modifiers and turn this switch off, apply to shadows. So now we have just the material with no shadows. Obviously, this is not what we're going for, so I'm going to click on this thumbnail and I'm going to select the Pablander Super Comic material. So this is the material that is a free download, it's a free resource, and you can find that in the tutorial about how to customize this material and how to um, achieve this comic style render. And again, I'll just put a link so that you can follow that tutorial as well. But yeah, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is load the uh, the material, the super comic material, and from the first material shading filter selected from this uh, thumbnail right here. So just by changing this uh, first filter, this takes us almost like uh, 70 or 80% to the final <laughs> result or the final look that we're going for. But of course, we want to do something more like a blue pencil sketchy line so we need to change a few things so let's go ahead and enable the second filter and selecting it and I'm gonna go to the filter type and I'm gonna choose something very simple like the paint right and if I set this paint slider to 100 uh, you see it's a very simple filter it's just taking whatever front color we have and when we set this to 100% and it's just filling the entire area so what I want to do is change this color to the blue color or like a blue pencil color that, you know, you can go for a red color, whatever you want, but you know, just gonna try to recreate what I showed you at the beginning. So I'm gonna go for a blue color like this. Now, the other thing I wanna do is go to the mask uh, slider and set this to one. And what this does is use the render or the alpha that Sirius renders every time that you click on BPR and is going to use that mask to target uh, or to restrict the use of this filter. So now the effect of whatever you do on the filter is happening only in the in the mask area, right? Or wherever the, um, the mesh is. And obviously this is helpful, but what I actually want to do is to be able to target those dark areas with the blue color. So what I can do is change the blending mode. So I'm gonna click on the blending mode of this paint filter and set it to uh, something like screen. There we go. So just by changing that, you can apply this front color to the darker areas. So let's go ahead and you know, change this a bit, make it a bit more saturated, something like that. And the cool thing is that you can come back and tweak things just to refine the look of your filter. Now, one thing you notice is that the color outside in the canvas is pure white and the one inside is not as white. So we can go ahead and enable the third filter. And from the type of filter, we can go for uh, contrast user color. So that's gonna give us a bit of contrast and bring this to like the, the purity of the white color, the white values to kind of like the same at uh, the same level. But obviously you can change, you know, the the amount of this filter or the, the amount of the effect of this filter and then also the opacity. So let's set the opacity to 50%. I don't want to overexpose everything too much. And that's about it. So now we have like the first three filters that give us the basis for the effect, but now we can start breaking the line and making it look a lot more organic. So let's go ahead and enable the fourth filter. And for the type, I'm gonna choose, uh, let's go for noise. And I'm gonna set it to 100, so you can really see the effect. So obviously this is the one that is gonna give us uh, all that sort of noisy feel, almost like achieving a bit of a, a paper texture, right? But I don't wanna apply it to everything, right? So we can do the same thing we did before with the paint filter. So take the mask, set it to one. So now the effect of this noise is applied only to the model. Uh, but I wanna restrict the, the placement of this noise a little bit more. So I'm just gonna go to, let's just scroll down a little bit more. Um, here where it says the gray range, this slider works a lot better if you have a, a few different shades of, uh, of different values of gray. So let's just push this to 100, or oh, maybe not 100, maybe 92. Actually, let's go for 80, right? Um, so you see, now the effect is a lot more subtle, but it's a lot stronger, or you can see it a lot, a lot easier in the darker areas. So that's what I want to achieve. Let's go ahead and turn this on and off. And you can definitely see that we just added a, a bit of texture to the entire render. All right, so we're getting there. Let's go ahead and enable another filter. Turn that on, and I'm gonna select the type. I'm gonna go for displace. And this is going to really change things a bit. So I'm gonna set it to 100 from the displace, and the radius is gonna actually change the size of the pixels that are being displaced. It's kind of like changing the frequency of the, of the displace, right? So I'm gonna go for, let's set it to 32. 
So that's plenty, right? So you see how much uh, we are distorting the lines of this render. And this is because the this displace uh, setting or the displace value is set to 100. But if I set it to, let's go for half of that, like 50, we can still see this sketch, but it feels a lot more organic. And the, the outline or the even the lines inside, they're kind of like wiggly. <laughs> so they feel a bit better in terms of like that organic feel or... Um, you know, to this sketch. Now, the cool thing we can do about this filter as well is that we can reduce the opacity of the filter. Let's go for as well 50. And that sort of like blends this even better because now you have like this sort of secondary lines uh, coming through. Uh, we'll probably have to get a little bit closer again just so that you can see better. I'm gonna do another render. And again, the, the cool thing about these filters is that you can move things around and everything happens at render time. So hopefully you can see in there, but you know, there's kind of like a secondary line um, going through. Even if I displace this to 100 again, all this effect that you can see the displacement is happening at 50%. So it's like a nice blend between the original and the one that is displaced. So hopefully that makes sense, but I'm just going to set the amount to 50 and the opacity to 50. So that is like a nice blend. All right, let's set this back to something like this and do another render again every time that you move the camera you'll have to re-render to see the filters okay so one of the things that um, you might notice when you use something like the displacement if i turn this on and off is that we are blurring the lines a little bit and we're losing some of the definition of the original um, the original render right so what we can do is in the next filter let's select that enable that and go to the type select sharpen so the sharpen filter if i set it to 100 you'll see it just sharpens the lines again. And if you really want to push the sharpening, you can take the radius and set it to 47. <laughs> and that will, uh, that will give you a pretty sharp, um, pretty sharp image. Obviously, this is way too much. So let's set it to something like three. Should be fine. Let's turn this on and off. And yeah, so this is really important when you use something like displacement, if you want to um, uh, redefine or uh, recover kind of like the sharpness of those lines, especially the details, um, that filter is fantastic for this this type of stuff all right so i think we have uh, covered kind of like the basics to set this up but i still want to break that line and again try to push that organic feel of like a hand-drawn uh, sketch or a 2d sketch so let's go ahead and do that with the next filter i'm going to select the seven filter and enable that and for this i'm going to choose a pretty complex but um useful filter which is called the overpaint texture and when i say complex it's not that is complex to use. It's just that it has a lot of options. So I'm going to change the overpaint texture size just a bit so that you can see it's just a bunch of squares that get overlaid on top. But the kind of like the advanced or, or more complex settings are within the modifiers. So if I click on the modifiers, you'll see we have a bunch of sliders. And these sliders allows you to change the type or the kind of like the shape of these squares. For example, if I click on modifiers and change the um, X slope, it just becomes kind of like these triangular shapes. So you can play with the X slope and the Y slope a bit and create kind of like a trapezoid. Let's push this a bit more so you can really see the effect. So you can play with something like this. And then the next thing you can do is change the width, the height, and the overall size as well. So let's change the width. And we can change the variation so that not all squares are the same. Same thing with the height, so not, not all the the squares are the same and you'll see that we started to distort this quite a bit right which is you know an interesting effect but what i want to do is make those squares a lot smaller so that it feels more in line with what we're trying to create so let's reduce the texture size till we start to distort that line nicely so let's go for 40 yeah i think that's all right and let's click on the modifiers and probably one of my favorite um, sliders is the base orientation because that allows you to change the orientation of the squares based on the uh, values of the render. So I'm going to change this to seven. Again, all of these things are a lot easier to see if you have a material with a lot more shading or, or values in it. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that, add a bit of uh, variation in the orientation. And we can play with the size as well. So this basically changed the size of the squares based on the intensity. And I can spend a lot of time just playing around with this thing in here. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that. Uh, but of course, this doesn't do much, right? This is just basically uh, distorting the image, but we're losing a lot of the definition. So what we can do is a couple of things. We can change the blending mode. So in the blending mode, I'm going to set it to uh, multiply. And obviously, now you can see a bit more of the sketch underneath, but then you have this 
um, you know, weird spec. So this is not really what we're going for. So instead, what I can do is change the color, which at the moment is set to black, uh, for something closer to this blue tone that we have been using. So I'm going to click on this swatch here, and I'm going to go for a lighter blue. All right, something, something like this. And let's go ahead and actually go to the modifiers and just play around with the with the size and the width a bit more. All right, just to add a bit of variation to um, the height and the width, and then we can play with the size of the overall texture a little bit more. So this filter now is giving us those extra details around, um, kind of like imperfections around the outline or the lines, but it's also adding a bit of gray values to the overall image. So we can restrict it with the masking, right? But we also lose the details outside uh, or like outside the outline. So I'm going to leave this one at zero. And instead, what we can do is uh, sharpen this first. So let's add another filter, enable that. And I'm going to select the filter sharpen, set it to 100. And yeah, so this filter helps us refine again the, the sharpness of those details and those lines. But again, uh, because this is kind of like a gray color now, we can use another filter. I'm going to go ahead and select the nine filter and enable that. And from the filter type, I'm going to choose Orton. So this Orton filter is kind of like washing the colors a little bit. And we can add maybe, let's set it to 81 or 80, right? And that sort of give us a more, uh, like a brighter image, right? You can also enable another filter and then go for uh, something like contrast user color. And that way you can just contrast things a little bit more and play with the opacity. At this point, it's just a matter of like tweaking things and um, just changing the, the subtlety of each, um, of each effect or each filter. All right, so that's pretty much it. We have a pretty decent result that we can recreate every time that we move the camera. Let's, for instance, disable perspective and go from a different angle, click the BPR render button, and then we'll have a new um, a new mesh or a new render. Let's do that again. So pretty cool stuff, right? So now if you like what you've done, right? And if you want to save all of this for the next time that you open up ZBrush and you know you can load your filters, all you have to do is go to the save filter. And this will save the entire set of filters with all the settings that you set up. You can also go to the save button here in the render palette. And that not only is going to save all the filters that you've set, but it's also going to save any setting that you change. So for example, in the BPR shadow, if you increase the angle to make more like a, a softer shadow or you know the strength, all of that, you can totally go for that and, and just you know save it within the render palette. And that way, all of those settings will be um, saved with it or with the same file. All right, so that's about it in terms of creating your own set of filters uh, to build this type of look and feel. Now I'm going to show you how cool and easy it is to change the type of filters and using the ones that are part of the, the filters pack. So let's go ahead and jump into that. I'm going to click on the Lightbox render set. And that's going to open up the Lightbox. And I have already set them up in here. So I have my own folder. And all I have to do, because this is already a render, is, for example, click on the awesome shaded pencil sketch. And I just called it like that because this is kind of like my favorite one of the pack. And it's going to give you a, a shading that looks kind of like this, um, you know, blue pencil sketch, which is pretty cool. And of course, you have access to all the different filters. So you can literally just go ahead and turn them all on and off and see what each filter is doing or how each filter is contributing to the final uh, look. Yeah, the final filter that I created for you, uh, all the settings. So let me just show you a couple more uh, because all you have to do is, is just that. Just click on, double click on this one. This is the um, newspaper sketch, uh, which is a lot richer in terms of the texture, right? So you get this nice sort of like, um, yeah, like a newspaper print type of thing with this uh, paper uh, texture as well. Uh, but yeah, all you have to do is click on load in the render settings. Uh, like I said, I already have them in the Lightbox, but you can click on load and that's it. You don't have to do anything else. Just load your mesh and select something else. So I'm going to go for maybe this graphite um, pencil sketch. This one is pretty, uh, pretty sketchy, pretty rough, but I think it looks, it looks quite cool. Right. So this is more like a, like a softer set of lines done with a um, large pencil. But like I said, you can use this in any, any object that you have. So let me just load another character that I actually used to develop this. All right, so I have this, um, this character here. 
And yeah, it's just another mesh. And I'm going to click on BPR. And because I already have loaded that sketchy uh, pencil, you get the result straight away. Uh, let's go ahead and load a couple more. Um, for instance, this, this is shaded sketch or the clean shaded sketch is kind of like a rough pencil sketch that you went ahead and clean outside. So that's another type of render. Uh, but yeah, so it's as easy as just double clicking on the different filters or loading them in case you don't have them in the lightbox and, you know, achieve this type of look with a simple click. And because it is a filter, right, or a set of filters or settings, you can just keep moving things around, rotating and rendering again to, to get this result. And let me just show you one more that is pretty cool, like this pen hatch sketch that um, is not as sketchy in, in terms of the the type of pencil. This is more like a, like a pen sketch uh, with all this sort of like hatching. So that's pretty cool as well. Now, if I go back in here, you'll notice that I have this folder that has four additional filter settings. And those are kind of like special ones. Everything is covered in the tutorial and the quick start guide that comes with the pack. But basically, these ones are special because they work better with a specific material. So if I double click this one right now, because I have the matcap gray selected, you'll get a pretty random, <laughs> um, you know, it's not great. Right. And the reason for this is because this specific set of filters work best with a material that is provided with the pack as well. So let's go ahead and click on the material and I'm going to select the blue pencil sketch. So this is a material that sort of like gives you the similar look like a blue pencil to the sketch uh, in the viewport. So you can move things around and it already looks uh, kind of cool. But if I go ahead and do a render, now you get a much better result, right? Because it is using the combination of this uh, material with those filters. So that's the same for the rest. So you can go for a cleaner look like this and get those very clean lines of the 2D sketch um, or this one that is, uh, it's similar, but it has a bit more shading around the, the contours like that. Or you can just load this one as well, which is pretty cool as well, right? And a lot cleaner, but it has a bit of the texture, kind of like a paper texture. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Let me know how you're using the filters, uh, what you think about them. And if you create your own, feel free to share them as well. I'd love to see it. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.